This week on the homestead began with some new garden friends joining the homestead. We always have new animals joining and these ones are especially special because we are adopting them from a friend who's moving up to Queensland. We have been talking about expanding our chicken egg flock for a while. It's not that we need more eggs, but we love to share them and we love to cook with them and always have them on hand and feel abundant with oh, wow. eggs. So I'm really excited to welcome six more beautiful <laughs> hens at Egg Lane Point right onto our property. Me too. <laughs> Morning, ladies. Without a rooster, the flock is much calmer, even though we've introduced six new hens from a friend. Thank you to Kelly. Kelly was actually the person that we bought our pigs from a year ago, and we made a really great connection with her. She was a wealth of knowledge at the nursery, and we're really going to miss her, but at least we're going to honor her on our homestead <laughs> with all of these funny new chooks. <laughs> morning. Mm, no. Better lay some eggs ladies. We're not squatting here. Go work for our stay. garden is finally starting to produce enough food for us to start preserving and that's exactly what I plan on doing today with all of the rhubarb that I have, all of the nasturtium flowers and even some of the garlic scapes that I have growing in my garden. I really want to start preparing things now so that come Christmas time I have lots of delicious gifts to give to others but I'm also considering joining the local farmers market with my very own stall maybe selling some of our own produce or products that we make from them, or even selling things like gifts, macrame, or I don't know, whatever my little heart desires. It's still something I'm tossing up and thinking about, but it could definitely be the next step forward for us. My favorite garden snack is back, finally. I have just come back from the farm's market which you can see I've picked up a few goodies to plant into the ground. I've got some zucchini plants because I just want a lot of zucchini this year. I'm planning on freezing a lot of it and turning it into brownies. I also found some dahlias which are a beautiful watermelon color and I've seen a lot of other YouTube friends of mine like Kathy from Little Garden Big Dreams and of course Anita at Flower Folk Farm really enjoying these dahlias in their gardens so I was inspired and I got some since they were available. Um, I also picked up some turmeric and turmeric can be turned into a powder and then eaten. We have a lot of curries personally so it's a spice we use all the time and I'm pretty sure it makes a really beautiful plant just like the ginger that we have in our garden currently. So I'm excited to plant that into the ground and hopefully have some more turmeric happening. Today I am planning on making some Worcestershire sauce and there's going to be a big batch of it that I'll be able to give away for some Christmas gifts but also have plenty for ourselves. Usually Sam's dad is the one to hand out some Worcestershire sauce to family members. He didn't do it last year though so we have gone through our supplies and need plenty more. So I've got all the ingredients I need for that. I'm also going to be preserving some rhubarb that I got from the garden this morning. Later on, I'm hopefully going to be following Robin's recipe for her nasturtium flower jelly or nasturtium flower syrup, one or the other. I'm going to give it a go and see how it tastes. 
Um, and then, yeah, I have a bunch of lemons still left over that I need to dehydrate, candy and preserve, but I don't think I'll be getting to that today because I still have so much I need to do. I need to make dog food, I need to plant this into the ground, and I have lots of ambitions and very little time. So we're gonna get right to it and just see what we manage to achieve. Oh, by the way, this giant pumpkin, yeah, we grew that. <laughs> I feel like I should make some ravioli soon with this pumpkin. I have about 20 minutes to go before my sourdough needs to be worked and mixed and have the salt put through it. So I'm working against a clock at the moment. <laughs> That's enough time to get this hopefully cut up. So with the rhubarb, I'm going to make a rhubarb barbecue sauce. This is a recipe from um, Becky from Acre Homestead. I don't add the raisins that she does though, because last time I did it, we didn't really like the texture of them in there. So I'm going to omit that for something else. Sweet, possibly some apple. I actually did remember that I had some that I froze last season, so I'm going to let some of these thaw out and use them up instead. Um, and I'm just going to get the rest of the ingredients for now. Half a cup of onion, half a cup of vinegar. Half a cup of onion. What is half a cup of onion? You know, a quarter cup of an onion. So is that half an onion? I don't know. Half an onion, one and a half. Because I'm half in the recipe, so one and a half. Salt. apples are going to work better than the raisins because they'll actually melt away into the sauce while the raisins kind of stayed chunky and it was a really yucky texture <laughs> when we used it. So let's chop. I'll use how much that is. I'm going to say that's a cup of apple. Very roughly chopped. We're going to do a teaspoon of each of these, so teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon of chilli, I'm going to do two paprika. while the rhubarb barbecue sauce is on and the dog food as well I'm about to get the sourdough out to do the first lot of stretch and fold and then it's going in for its bulk ferment and I'll be doing that stretch and fold routine every now and again so I'm going to show you guys the dough feels pretty good this time it's way less sticky maybe I used less water this time 
than I did last time. I'm not sure what I did wrong last time. It was very sticky. So hopefully a better loaf coming to us this time. Even though the last one was so delicious and two loaves lasted three of us all week. Oh yeah, that's so much better. I'm improving. <laughs> Alright, we let this rest for 15 minutes and bulk fermentation begins. Oh, sticky dough, sticky, sticky. See, I think the secret with a good sourdough loaf is not experience or technique or anything else or a recipe. I think it literally comes down to having a mature starter. This is now a three week old starter from the day that I made it. And it's so much easier to, um, it's so much easier to get to rise. I had it in the fridge for a week and then I woke it up again on Thursday morning and I'm now using it on Friday. And so even though it's been asleep in the fridge for a week, it is so much more alive and thriving and able to get the process started in the sourdough loaf that I think it does make a difference. So if you're a beginner, don't feel bad or be hard on yourself for not having a good loaf from the very first day that your start is ready. I think give it two weeks before you start to make a loaf with it because it's going to make a big difference. And that's just, uh, from a newbie. Oh, that barbecue sauce. Yum! That's a vegetable, like that's amazing. And now while the sourdough is resting for a little bit just before I have to start the bulk ferment process, I'm going to do my apples for my... I'm going to do the apples for my Worcestershire sauce. I think instead of throwing away the apple peels though, I might have a go at making apple cider vinegar. It's actually super easy. You just add sugar, water and apples into a container. So why not try? Got plenty of apples that I'm about to go through. All the experiments today. Apple cider vinegar is super beneficial to so many things. It's good for gut health because essentially it's fermented. It's good for animals. So if you put it into an animal's drinking water, it can have a really good beneficial effect on their stomach. So I'm really excited to try to make this at home because it sounds pretty easy. You can even use it to replace white vinegar with cleaning. It will just give a nice apple scent. And you can actually use it in cooking and preserving as well. But the disadvantage in that is that it does give a bit of a flavor and also a color because of its dark nature. That giant pot at the back is for the Worcestershire sauce because I'm not quite sure how much space I'm going to need. It needs like five liters of vinegar. So just in case. do we need 125 grams of garlic and I got this because I did not want to peel and do all that to so much garlic goes in later. The 
only other thing we need is seven anchovies. This fancy little jar. What am I going to do with the rest of it, really? So I might as well just uh, rest in. Extra tasty and salty. This company is very cheeky. They put it all around the jar as if it was full, which it wasn't. And you know that it's true. Okay, so right now with my sourdough, it is bulk fermenting, which means this is where all of its rising is going to happen from that sourdough starter. I have three 15 minute intervals, as well as three 30 minute intervals to get other things done. So I'm gonna start with coming out here, letting the little baby chicks out, checking on my bees, then it'll be time to fold for the first time. Feels like summer today. Now this makes me a little bit nervous because they might not come back tonight, but let's hope they will. Hello! Come on! Come on! Eris. So much better than last time. And on to the next one. chickens. Good, that looks pretty good. I'd say three tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> Doesn't it look great? Look at the 
jiggle. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. No, look at the jiggle. <laughs> Glutinous. Yes. Ah, oh, look at that form. Oh, this is exciting. Do we pay the rent? I'm looking at all of you. Ha ha! Guess how many eggs? Three. Six. Six eggs. <laughs> wow! Good job, ladies. Great rental payment. You can stay. Sorry, food. Seven. There's two in there. Is there? Eris, there's two. I think this is the best place for my tree mate. Let's pick a garden snack and chat. Yes, my nails are filled with dirt. <laughs> I am a grub. Last time that I shared some of the books that I picked up at the library, you guys were super keen. I wasn't a big fan of the native medicinal book. It was a little bit hard to digest with not enough images. So my recommendation wouldn't be to get that one unless you love super scientific books. Um, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't for me. Have you guys seen my pearl lilies? They're so beautiful. Black pearl. Oh, and they smell good too. All right, so some of the things that I picked up from the library. I picked up, I picked up some more homesteader-friendly books that are written from people that garden um, and are quite well known. So I think you guys will know these books. So the first book I picked up was the Milkwood book. Uh, Milkwood is a permaculture farm. I'm pretty sure it's quite close to us or perhaps it's up towards Queensland but I think there'll be a wealth of knowledge in here and I'm just really keen to hear their perspective and also hear their ideas on how they make things work and how they work with others on their property. I also picked up Hannah Maloney's book, which is a new one, it's called The Good Life. Um, I've heard a lot of really good reviews about it. Hannah actually makes certain videos for Gardening Australia, so she's super duper popular and I just, I love these types of books. I think they're so beautiful to read, um, really inspirational, and I tend to gravitate more towards these kinds of books when I'm reading things, as opposed to like a fiction story, which can sometimes be really heartbreaking or really like down. So I like the uplifting stories of real life that people experience out on their homesteads, farms, or even gardens. So yeah, super excited to check these two out. I did also pick up some mail and I got a adult coloring book and I want to share it because this is just so beautiful. I plan on sending a couple of these to my sister and my best friend so that we can catch up on Zoom together and just color in. But this is such a beautiful book and inside too it's just filled with like little fairies in their gardens and on days where I need something more relaxing than trying to draw from scratch. I'll be picking up this book and using my watercolors in it. So I'm so, so excited. It looks stunning. Like, look. 
Oh, so pretty. It's called the Lunar Coloring Book. Might even do that now. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do now. While I wait for my sourdough. Now that the summer sun is here, or at least the end of spring is feeling almost like summer, I'm taking advantage of going outside, sitting on a picnic rug, just enjoying being out in the elements again, enjoying that sunshine on my skin and all of the sounds of the homestead around me. Whether I'm reading or painting or just relaxing with the dogs, it has been such a pleasure to be in the space surrounded by all of the animals and the gardens that we've raised. That's how much one big pot made, which these are going to be perfect Christmas gifts. Now I need to shake the sourdough. All right, so we need to fold into the middle. Left to right, right to left, top to bottom. Pinch the sides and then oh god I forgot Pinch the sides something about rolling onto itself oh I forgot I don't think I was supposed to do that Go with it. Make it tight. Oh god, it's so sticky. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Perfect. Alright, and then that goes into the fridge in a plastic bag. Thanks, baby. For tomorrow? Tomorrow morning before we go to the gig. Oh, awesome. I'll be baking bread. It is the next morning and it's time to bake my sourdough loaves. I'm so excited with how well they rose and I cannot wait to see how they bake up this time. I feel like each week I'm getting better and better and it's not so much experience or practice. I think the really big difference is just my sourdough starter and being older. Oh no, I forgot to put the lid onto the sourdough. It's still sprung up and it looks beautiful, but I think it's going to darken and harden too much now. Sounds pretty good. 
And this is the bad one, guys. 